Hi there, welcome to our next Brecal video where we are discussing synthetic division. So just a couple notices, so make sure you read the next three slides. And this one is really just showing you that update in your syllabus. Um, you can really see that week four, we're just focusing on synthetic division in the remainder. Okay, so today, synthetic division. Next week, are we will work on our theorems and then, of course, real-world polys. So, some prior knowledge you need is that number set language. So, just a reminder, this is our number set, um, natural whole integers and rationals. I hope that we can recall that. Irrationals are on the outside. Real numbers are all of these. And then complex numbers are outside of that set. We're talking about the imaginaries and all of that. Okay, long division, just like in general from elementary school, we're going to convert that to polynomial long division. And then we're going to talk about, well, sorry, that's a typo from last time. Zeros is actually, uh, well, knowing what a zero is or solution or root or x-intercept, um, we kind of have to use that information to finish the solves of synthetic division. And then some vocab words, uh, leading term. So here's an example. Leading term would not be this one. It actually would be negative 7x to the fifth. And then my turning point, that's uh, what, if you don't know this vocab, maybe Google it or come see me. But a turning point is how many times you have that extrema or um, points of inflections. And so uh, you don't, sorry, you use your degree, but it's actually n minus 1. So in this time, it would be 5 minus 1. So I have four turning points. Not defined, I have at most four turning points. So that's not, a ne that's not necessarily a, uh, like an always true, but that's telling you the maximum number you could have had. Okay, so long division, I'm just going to show you some stuff that, we, you know, like a recall from, I think, elementary school. So this I stole from an elementary website. In case you couldn't remember, we divide, multiply, subtract, drag down, repeat until you're at the end. So we're going to do the same things today with synthetic division. Okay, some recall about some vocabulary. Today I'm going to be using our vocabulary, divisor, dividend, quotient, remainder. So if you don't remember what those words are or where they are in it, maybe write yourself out a little cheat sheet, take a photo, take a snippet, whatever you need to do. Um, I just wrote a very brief cheat sheet and I don't know if this webcam is flipped or not, but all I did was write, you know, divisor, dividend, quotient, remainder, just as a little cheat sheet, just to kind of, hey, if I was a student, what would I want in front of me as I did this um, video today? So long division, if I was doing 324 divided by 7, well, we start with division. Can 3 divide by 7? No. So then I move over to the next value. 32 divided by 7? Yes. This goes into it 40, four times. So then I multiply. There's that step 2. 7 times 4 is 28. Then I do the subtraction step, which 32 minus 28 is 4. And then I do the drag down step. And finally, we're at our repeater. And you continue until the end, until you have a remainder. Today, we're going to learn how a remainder should be written in pre-cal. So brief recall. Now let's look at polynomial long division. So consider this polynomial function. f of x is equal to 6x cubed minus 25x squared plus 18x plus 9. If you know that f has a 0 at x equals 3, then you also know that there must be a factor of x minus 3. So basically, if I know I have a solution at 3, then what is that if in its factored form? Struggle If you're struggling with this concept, again, see me, or you can wait until the next video when we actually talk about the factor theorem. Because you know that this is a third degree polynomial, then if I factor out an x, what's left? So what's 6x cubed divided by x? x squared. That's that second degree polynomial they're talking about. So I know I have this x minus 3 times some second degree polynomial. That's all they're saying. So how do I use that information? Okay, well, let's divide it. The way it looks right now, that's kind of ugly. But I'm going to ask myself some questions. Is it in a, is it in descending order with my leading term in the very front? In this instance, it was. But if I had these two values switched, in the original question, I would have to make sure to switch them. So always place it in descending order. The second question is, do I have any gaps to account for? Well, what if this value never existed? That term was not there. Then I would need to account for that gap. There is an x squared. It just has a coefficient of zero. That's especially important when we move to synthetic division. Okay. We're ready to go, so I'm going to move to long division format. It looked ugly. I made it look good. That's, that's the very first step. Make it look good. Descending, gaps, 
put it in your long division format. So the very first thing we're going to do is the step one of normal long division. Divide, then multiply, subtract, drag down, repeat. That's all we're doing. Let me show you how. So we're going to divide 6x cubed divided by x. That is 6x squared. I don't place it anywhere willy-nilly. I place it in the correct column. They match. Now I'm going to do my multiplication step. But what do I multiply? This fact and this one. So I multiply these together. So here's where, oops. So x times 6x squared is 6x cubed. And that's where this one came from. Negative 3 times 6x squared is negative 18x. So that's where this one came from. Step 4, the subtraction process. Hey, really quickly, a brief self-check. Does your leading term cancel out? Then you're doing it right. Okay, so I'm going to drag that down. But before I drag that down, let's actually look at that subtraction. So a common thing I would see here is that students would try to do negative 25 and negative 18, and they would get a big negative value. But that's actually not what's happening. Do not forget to distribute this negative over. We usually remember this one, but sometimes we forget this one. So this actually becomes plus, And that's why it's negative 25 and positive 18 gives me negative 7. So I dragged it down, and now I'm going to repeat. So divide negative 7x squared by x gives me negative 7x. I place it in the correct column. Then I multiply, subtract, and drag down again. All right, one more time. Divide, place it in the correct column, multiply, subtract, and this time, we're going to verify because we're at the end. We're at the last one that we dragged down. So two things about the remainder. If it was zero, we're good. That's it. Continue to the, the slide where I'm going to show you how to finish the problem. If it didn't equal zero, we would write it as a polynomial remainder. And that's I've got a slide on that as well. So just let just be a little patient. All right. So at this point, this is where we finished. We divided and we ended up with this on the top. This was our quotient. But am I truly done? I want it in its full factored form. That means I want single x's. I don't want x squareds or x cubes, or I want it in its fully factored form. This is what we call the depressed polynomial. No, I'm not talking about depression. I'm talking about the form of depressing to make smaller. So if you've gotten down to the point where you have reached x squared, that's a quadratic polynomial. We should recognize how to factor it in one of the multitudes of ways. Um, A times C, the box method, the reverse foil, the, well, what else is there? By grouping, there's so many different ways to factor, but if you hit X squared, that's enough. So let me show you the rest. So that means technically, this is equal to the factor of this, times this. Well, isn't that how the opposite of division works? It sure is. But I'm not fully done because I can factor this. So I went ahead and factored it. Ta-da! It's factored. So that's my end factor. It's not my end fully answer because typically we want our polynomials in their solution form. That means I set it equal to zero and I solve each factor by itself. So x minus 3 equals 0 becomes x equals 3. 2x minus 3 equals 0 becomes 3 halves. 3x plus 1 equals 0 becomes negative 1 third because each time you're solving for x. That's it. That's all we do. So all I'm going to do from now is show you how to do this using synthetic division. These steps still stay the same, no matter what, no matter if you use synthetic division. The moment you make it to x squared, the depressed polynomial, the moment you make it to x squared, Factor, set to zero, solve for x. So really quickly, let me talk about the polynomial remainder. If you don't have a remainder equal to zero, you have to write it as remainder over divisor, where x cannot be equal to, the bottom cannot be equal to the divisor zero point. So what that means is, you know, you can't divide by zero, right? Okay, so consider the following worked example. We have all of this. I've already worked it out. We do have a remainder down here of negative 5. So you guys in the past are used to writing just R negative 5 or remainder negative 5. But now I'm going to show you that's not quite how we do it. Finish the expression. It should not say remainder negative 5 because that's not a workable solution. So how do I make it a workable solution? This is the notation I just showed you. Ta-da! Now it's a workable solution. And I've given the point where I could not ever exist. And what do I mean by that? I set the bottom equal to zero, solved for x, and that is my eh 
no, no point. That is my domain restriction. X cannot be zero in the denominator. But if you look right here, this is a true expression. I could plug a value into this and get a value back. I can't plug a value into this because that remainder negative five. So difference. All righty, let's move to synthetic. Oh, sorry. Here is an example for you to try on your own. Absolutely come show me this in class. Synthetic division. This is a shortcut that we use, and what we do is we, in fact, suppress the variables of a basic long division problem. That's all a synthetic division really is, is long division, and you suppress the variables. And by suppress, I mean disappear them, make them go away. So here is an image of a synthetic division. This is all we're going to do. So we're going to create our, our coefficients, then we're going to add down, multiply, swing across. Add down, multiply, swing across. Add down, multiply, swing across. And whatever is the final is your remainder. If it's zero, then you know that that's you're good to go. If it if it's a real number, then that is your remainder. You have to use that remainder um, notation. That's correct. Now something to note here: What did I start with? I started with a cubic. So whatever I divided by the first should help me out. So x cubed divided by x to the first becomes x3 minus 1, which becomes x squared. So this 2, negative 11, 32, those have to be x squared. So that's where this came from, 2x squared minus 11x plus 32. It just follows the pattern in descending order. And then, of course, the remainder, if there is a remainder. All right, steps for writing synthetic division. You are welcome to snip this, copy this, whatever you need to do, but I'm gonna go through them as well as we go. So here's my first example. If we look back at example one that we did together, I have all of this crazy, but what happens when I suppress the variables? Wow, it's a little easier to look at because it's just numbers. It looks chaos -y right now, so let's adjust the chaos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing it over into this format. Now, it's already set up, but let me highlight some relevant information. Where did these numbers come from right here? Where did 6? Negative 25. So let's watch. 6, I brought 6 here. Negative 25, I brought negative 25 here. Positive 18, 18. 9, 9. But I didn't check certain things. Because this was example 1, I had already checked. Is it in descending order? Are there any gaps? Okay, so those are important questions to ask. Because in synthetic division, if it just did this, and I went from 6 to 18 to 9, this would be wrong every single time. I have to put a 0 right there and use the 0 inside. I need all my columns. All right, where did the 3 on the outside come from? That is part of the synthetic division definition, and that's going to come from that um, your, your factor on bottom, x minus 3. It always has to be in the form of x minus c, and so this will always be c. You solve for it. So x minus 3 equals 0 plus 3 plus 3. That's why the negative becomes positive. Um, you'll see in a little bit what happens if there's a value in front. Again, it's a simple solve. So if it said 2x minus 3, we'd set it equal to 0, add 3 to both sides, and then divide by 2. And so your new number here would actually be 3 halves, and you'd have to do a fraction. I have a question exactly like that that I'm going to do next. But let's move forward. Where did all these other numbers come from? So if I ignore all these numbers for a second, and I just was looking at this, I left myself one line of space, I drew a line, and I have one more line of space. How do I do this? Well, like I said, we're going to add down, we're going to multiply, and then we're going to drag across. Okay? So let's see what that looks like. Add down. There's nothing here. So 6 plus 0 becomes 6. 6 times 3 becomes 18. I swing it across. Add down. Negative 25 plus 18 is negative 7. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21 because I swung it across. 18 minus 21, negative 3. 3 times, negative 3 times 3, negative 9. Swing it across. 9 minus 9 is 0, so that means my remainder is 0. From here, what do I do next? I plug in my x's, but before I can know how many x's I have, let's check where we started. We started at a cubic. That means if I divided by 1, I'm at squared. So x squared, x, there's technically an x to the 0, but nothing, and then that's good. So that's my answer, 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. Hey, we already knew that. So from here, you know what to do next. You take that depressed polynomial, because I hit the x squared. You take the depressed polynomial, and you factor. You set each factor equal to 0, and you solve for your solutions. 
Miss Jag, what happens if I start with 6x to the fourth? Well, then I do a synthetic division until I get 6x, the, my cubic. Then I do another synthetic division until I get my x squared. And that's my depressed polynomial. I can factor, set equal to zero, and solve for my solutions. But let's see one where the coefficient is not equal to one. This one right here where you know you're about to get a fraction right here. So I did this. I set 2x minus 3 equal to 0 for us, and I know that this is actually going to be 3 halves. So let me show you what I did. Let's test first. Is it pretty? Is it descending? Yes. Are there gaps? Not that I need to worry about, so let's bring them down. 10, negative 13, 5, negative 14. I don't think I need that row. All right. Swing it on down, and we end up with, oh, Oops, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Miss Jag started wrong. This is three halves. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, because we because we got rid of that division of two right here, because we got rid of that division of two, guess what you have to do to your entire numerator? We are going to have to divide every value by two, but it's so simple. What's 10 divided by two? Five. What's negative 13 divided by two? We're going to be nice and easy. Negative 13 over two. Five over two and negative 14 over 2. Whoa, that's 7. I know that one. Negative 7. So now I'm ready to go. Okay, so drag the 5 down. 5 times 3 halves. I already did this work, so I'm just going to bring it over. 15 over 2. Negative 13 halves plus positive 15 halves gives me 1, because it really gave me 2 over 2, so that's just 1. 1 that goes brings back to 3 halves. If I uh, add those together, I get 4. 4 because I get 8 halves, which is just 4. If I multiply again, I got 6, and then we end up with a remainder of negative 1. So let's finish this off. I started at x squared, x cubed, so I know this is x squared, x, and that's a 0 value, and this is my remainder. So let's write it out. I end up with 5x squared plus x plus 4 minus 1 over my original 2x minus 3. And that is my answer, unless I'm continuing to solutions and all of that. This one would be funky. This is one that we'd either have need the quadratic formula or we would need to uh, somehow uh, bring all that in, maybe at least common denominator. There's a million ways that we could continue this problem, but it's not as simple because that's not just a that's not just a standard depressed polynomial. So you you know may or may not want to attempt that, but that's as far as we would go on this one. So I've left one for you. I hope you give it a shot and come show me on Monday or Tuesday. Alrighty, thank you guys.